Thank you, Chairman, Chairwoman Maloney for calling this hearing today. Our committee's mission is government efficiency and effectiveness. Our committee's mission is to protect taxpayer dollars from government fraud, waste, and abuse. Our committee's mission is to hold government officials accountable. Republicans on this committee have been pushing for months to hold hearings on the many pressing crises caused by the Biden administration. While I'm pleased we finally have a top level Biden official testifying today, I must say this is long past due. I urge the chairwoman to hold more hearings like this one where we can examine the many crises impacting America today. Thank you, Dr. Gupta for testifying today. In January, Republicans on the Oversight and Energy and Commerce Committees launched an investigation into America's fentanyl crisis. We sent letters to the Office of Drug Control Policy, Customs and Border Protection, and the DEA seeking information about the Biden administration's plan to address the crises at the southern border and overdose epidemic. We appreciated the response from your agency, Dr. Gupta, but many important questions remain unanswered. One of these outstanding questions is how President Biden's border crisis and this administration's open border policies have aided and abetted trafficking of illicit drugs such as fentanyl into our country. Fentanyl is being smuggled across the south southwest border at unprecedented rates. U.S. Customs and Border Protection seized over 11,000 pounds of fentanyl in fiscal year 2021. That's more fentanyl seized in one fiscal year than fiscal years 2020 and 2019 combined. The standard fat fatal overdose of fentanyl is two milligrams. 11,000 pounds of fentanyl is more than five billion milligrams. That means we seized about 2.5 billion lethal doses of fentanyl in one fiscal year. That does not include all the fentanyl that we know has been smuggled across our borders undetected. Cartels are overwhelming border patrol agents and providing a steady supply for dealers and users alike. So a primary question is, what is President Biden going to do to secure the border and cut off the free flow of illicit drugs into our country? We also wrote an open letter to law enforcement seeking information about how the fentanyl crisis is impacting local communities. We received distressing responses from communities across the country. They tell us of the devastating effects fentanyl has had, of young lives lost and families destroyed. Madam Chairwoman, I ask unanimous consent to submit these response letters into the record. Objection. Thank you. Without objection. Thank you. On top of the crises at the southern border, Democrat lockdowns and school closures caused increased stress and mental health complications for teens and adults alike, leading to historic overdose rates. According to preliminary data from the CDC, more than 107,000 people died from a drug overdose in the U.S. in 2021. That's a nearly 15% increase over 2020, which is already a 31% increase over 2019. Our nation's mental health crisis continues to worsen due to the economic hardship and supply chain crises caused by President Biden's disastrous policies. Studies have shown that stress over money can make people up to 20 times more likely to attempt suicide. Inflation remains at a 40-year high, gas prices are the highest in American history, and many families are stressed, wondering how they're going to make ends meet. Tragically, fentanyl overdoses are becoming the leading cause of death for Americans age 18 to 45, more than COVID, car accidents, gun violence, breast cancer, or suicide. Teenagers and young, young adults are turning to Snapchat, TikTok, and other social media apps to find uh, Xanax and other pills, many of which are counterfeit and laced with fentanyl. Fentanyl has also been found in counterfeit vape pens and marijuana. We must act now to secure our southern border to stem the flow of illicit fentanyl. It's heartbreaking to see how desperately people are trying to escape the impacts of President Biden's policies. His administration has flooded the market with illicit drugs so they can do just that. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Thank you very much. And I would note in response to your statement that we have